So uh, let me dive right in. Yeah, somebody has said that it's people say it takes six months to write an SOP. You know what? Uh, the biggest trick in this is that uh, the challenge is not the writing. Your SOP could be thousand or fifteen hundred words. To write fifteen hundred words, you can type them out in a day. Okay, but what you write inside those fifteen hundred words that matters, right? So imagine that. your whole time in law school or as a law graduate till the time you apply for an llm if you know that moving abroad is the goal and you want to get an llm then you should be doing the work that will go in your sop okay so you don't want to land up you know okay i want to apply in 2021 and or early 2022 and now let me think about my sop and my law degree is nearly over or i have already been working for 2 years so i have no option right to change things like the surgery is already completed and now you are saying that i need to perform an operation again to heal myself fully what will you do you will take admission in llb again how are you going to manage that right so i suggest the reverse approach which is longer and stronger that you think about your sop from now onwards okay and i am going to explain to you every bit of content in the sop i believe in the giveaways there is more samples and stuff like that okay so uh, just a little briefing i'm going to how i'm going to go about this is i'll tell you uh, what is expected from an sop what are the mistakes people make and then i will get down to how to write an sop with an example of how i would do it if i applied for an llm myself does that make sense okay so uh, and we will address questions ar around that as i am speaking okay so this is going to be your number one tool it is going to trump any shortfall in your cv any shortfall in your grades anything that you think is not enough your sop is going to be the single most powerful tool okay so you have to focus a lot on this okay what is a university looking for in an sop so it is an over simplification you know whenever i talk to people they are telling me if you look at the articles on the internet also a lot of generic gyan is there don't lie show this show this achievement but lot of times when i think of applying myself using that guidance i am like what if i don't have any or what is the big leadership achievement in my uh, in my history at law school do you think like that you know people give that gyan and you are like okay great but where is the example of that big leadership achievement what is my real motivation behind doing law what is my real motivation behind behind pursuing llm you cannot tell them that hey i want to go and take a job in the in canada and that's why i am doing llm fine but that's not a big purpose for which the university is going to give you admission for right so you have to make it relevant for the university to consider you worthy of getting admission there right so how do you do that so it's an over simplification if you say that you simply is my screen visible i may need to relog in if if there is an issue okay it's visible fine it's an over simplification if you are saying that you have to write why you want to pursue an llm right the why is everything 1200 words of why okay so you can populate it with 100 bullet points this is why this is why this is why this is why and it will be torn into pieces of paper and thrown right no a lot of people are saying my screen is frozen uh ramanuj i need a minute i think i need to relog in into zoom all right okay, so i will uh, can you I take for a minute i'll come, come back. back i will take i will speak for a moment abhuda you fix it and come back so okay. you know what is very very important guys you know i what i have realized i'll tell you a story about my friend okay so there's this guy i won't take his name if i take his name i can't tell you the story okay so abhi you can leave you should exit from your zoom and join back exit from everything and join back restart i'm trying to do that so that i don't shut restart it. your Please. computer so that you have no problem okay so uh, i can't take his name but he was one of the people in the bottom of my uh, class okay so he was not a topper forget a topper he was like in the one of the last five guys in the class who has flunked many papers somehow he never flunked a year 
he finished with the same with with us but he was not uh, you know good okay so there is some guy called ullas who is saying buddy we don't want to hear bullshit so ullas maybe you shouldn't be here and maybe you should i mean what do you mean by can you clarify what you mean by bullshit you think i'm telling a bullshit story okay this is a real story okay so uh, this is a real thing that happened so what happened is that this guy wanted to actually do an mba and this was not llm he is a lawyer and he wanted to do an mba llm getting llm might have been a little easier for him but he wanted to do mba and he wanted to do it from uk okay and he ended up eventually ended up doing mba from oxford which has like one of the top business schools and he got a full scholarship like if you have tried you know that getting scholarship for llm is still possible getting scholarship for business school is almost impossible mba after llb okay almost impossible but he got it because of his sop and his sop was so powerful i can't tell you how powerful his sop was okay that he got a full scholarship to study mba at oxford with full scholarship you know what he read, he wrote in his this thing so he he is from a a uh, family which broke up when he was very young his mother and father split and his mother went to live in the uk while his fa- while his father was living in india okay and uh, he did not and he has a sister who's elder sister and he never met his sister for a long time okay and when he grew up he traveled abroad to meet his sister and they became very close and one and he was very depressed like you know after he graduated from college his career did not work out at all things were not working out for him and it was really bad for him okay somebody saying this is a waste of time you must be really dumb this story is the most important thing you'll hear about sop okay if you think this is not for you are in the wrong session okay and then what happened this guy sop is about story okay it's nothing else it's about power of storytelling power of storytelling power of storytelling can change your career if you don't understand the power of it you are making a big mistake okay so what happened is that this guy one day he was depressed he was clinically depressed and he went and met his sister and is and they were sitting in a in in a in, a, in london in a coffee shop and they were eating uh, they were eating scones and drinking tea okay and his sister said that i wish and and he said you know he said that i have to i have to get into some university somewhere uh, you know i am thinking of going to an university in the us and these are the university thinking and her sister said that i really wish that you could come here and study in the uk in a good university and then every weekend we will meet and have tea and scones like this and he was so moved by that experience he wrote about this in his sop he wrote the story of his life story what happened and he said that i want to study in this university i want to make my life in uk and i want to you know every weekend for the rest of my life i want to meet my sister and have tea and scones okay i want and he wrote a very genuine story and he said that i have failed my life in my life i did not do well in college i did not Uh, succeed in my career after that but this is an opportunity for me i want to come and study here and after that he got full scholarship in oxford and that's the truth guys like this is the power of storytelling okay and it is true you know it it adds up and you when you see something like this you know in your heart that this person is not bullshitting and i have seen so much story people saying i am a follower of bibek ananda i am a follower of nelson mandela i want to be like nelson mandela <laughs> i want to save the environment i want to save uh, the i want to you know uh, change uh, uh, gender justice blah 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 but you can see that it is like a nice story they are making in their sop it's not true this guy did not say anything good about himself he is told his genuine thing and he showed that he is a human being and there is leadership in what he wrote okay and he also wrote how he got out of depression after that 
like the way his sister said this and that helped him to get out of depression and he wrote about that the how he got out of depression and authenticity and vulnerability changed everything right he got a full scholar it's i can't tell you how rare this is okay now i am telling you write your sop like this okay abhi there go ahead okay so three things the college admission boards need needs to know okay and i am going to write so somebody was asking whether emotion is important emotion is very very important okay and if your sop doesn't communicate emotion doesn't make the recruiter feel something it is not going to work okay and um this is important for a number of things including your interviews also so here just hear me out on this so uh, it should look like this okay imagine you are the recruiter so or sorry you are the admissions board of a foreign university okay now what do you want to see from somebody who is applying to study at your university so there is a technical way i will teach you but there is a non technical way you should know that it should look like oh you were really born to do llm there okay but in the most genuine way possible so you can't fake it if you fake it then it's going to go down the trash can but you it it should look like you have are born to do the llm there okay and you can't be born to do an llm right but they want to know how you made every every choice in life and through college in a way that makes you fit to do that program from that university okay so now you know a lot of times we make random choices through college and after and before and we are not even aware you know a lot of us think why did i take up law what the hell am i doing with law some of us took up law because you know one of the reasons i took up law was i didn't want to go into an iit or an iim but there were other more genuine reasons i'll tell you later about but a lot of us have this at the top of our minds and we don't know that oh then how do i make my statement of purpose right so you cannot say that this was my last option right you can't say i didn't want to be competing for engineering so i chose this right so you want to find out those instances where which makes sense and the story adds up okay so if you plan well now a lot of you maybe first year second year third year where whichever your fourth year or law graduates you have to pick those experiences and you have to create those experiences okay and uh, so you have to create those experiences intentionally okay the second thing that a recruiter wants so one is you were born to do an llm like that's what they should feel like you did everything to do this okay second thing and this is something nobody plans for you are absolutely clear about what you will do with the llm degree and how you will contribute to the development of work in that domain so if you want to do an llm in technology law or in business law or in trade and tax okay you need to know that okay i am coming here to do an llm at your university because i want to research on this and after completing the llm this is how i want to contribute to work i want to stay there work in this area or i want to come back to india work in these kind of institutions okay that plan has to be crystal clear so if any of you think that you know in llm i will get opportunity to learn they will tell me what to do i will get more job opportunities no that's not how you have to position yourself in an sop you have to say this is exactly what i want exactly what i will be doing are you following this so you have to figure out this before in your sop you can change your plans later but it has to be crystal clear and figured out before otherwise your sop will not work okay so there's no point thinking that i am still figuring out very good if you are still figuring out but you need to figure that out and keep one version ready third you have to make the university's name shine any admission board person wants to think that if you graduate if you go out of my university 20 years down the line are you going to make the university proud in some way will you make add to the list of famous alma mater of this university right so this is the three points why i didn't give you examples is because this is at an emotional level now i'll give you examples and i will say exactly how i would write one for business laws if you know i just want to mention something i was talking to the dean of one us university very top us one of the top 10 us universities and i asked him that you know bobby can you tell me how to get a full scholarship like who do you give up i mean they decide now who to give a full scholarship to you know what he said he said i will give uh, you know remove this guy ullas from the session no yeah yeah 
just to block him remove him so that he can't join again okay so you know what happens is that he he, he said that if i think after reading your background sop etc that you will be somebody who can actually get a nobel nobel prize in the future i will give you a full scholarship otherwise i'll not give you full scholarship <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying that after going through your application and your profile and everything i think that this guy 20 years down the line might win a nobel prize but this is the taste i'm applying to people do you think this guy might win a nobel prize after 20 years if he has give him a full scholarship otherwise not now imagine uh, what you are dealing with here right <laughs> okay go ahead abhil okay so three criteria again and i want you to keep, this is the big indicator of how to write because after that it is technique okay and this is what the recruiter must feel you were born to do the llm there you are clear about what you will do with the llm and after and you will make the university proud okay now this is how you should remember nobel prize point is what ramana said now i'll share some list of most common mistakes that people make and then we will go down the technique because when you know this is a mistake then you will not make mistakes with the technique right you can work around it okay you must write a lot of personal stories in sop so this is number one mistake and you can say you know think that you are apply writing an sop now okay a statement of purpose explaining your motivations to do the program and think of the favorite university you want to go in harvard oxford chicago stanford whichever you want to go to right now this now now go through the points with me and tell me if this applies to you not having discovered your own life story so you might say i've lived my life i know everything but that's completely false most of us block out areas of our life we don't know how we made so many choices that we did right so introspection somebody called it discovering your life story takes a lot of work so not having discovered their life story deeply enough not understanding why they do certain things they do okay and as a result their motivations in the sop seem like a 5 mark or 10 mark answer a descriptive answer that you write in college what happens in the descriptive answer that you write in college everybody says the same thing from the same book and the same case right everybody says the same thing from the same book and the same case that you are trained in but if you write that in an sop it is not going to work following with me everybody so i can't write the same story from the same book <laughs> okay so i need to know my own unique motivation and how i made my choices a good sop will otherwise can drastically improve your chances despite an otherwise average academic performance and a bad sop can bring down all the good stuff you have in your cv okay so this is important lot of people have not done enough work or activities in their college on that area so there is too little for them to substantiate their motivations so what happens you can come up with a very fantastic emotional story that you had as a child but there is very little you did after that to follow through okay then what is the point of it right then it is going to be all faff in the air and the inter- and the admissions board will know so this usually happens when you have decided to go for an llm as an afterthought you know in the last year last last year you decide okay now i think llm is the best idea so there's too little preparation you haven't planned out your college activities in a way to do llm and to move abroad okay and so a lot of your college activities have been thoughtless and they have been random not directed towards an llm they might be great activities you might have done lots of moots lots of conferences but or lots of cultural stuff but it's not directed towards moving abroad right so i'm going to give you example now you know everything from your choice of subjects your electives your extra courses your internships your papers life experiences okay even where you choose to travel to you can use an example of a vacation and say i went to this country to understand how it would be to live and study there and interviewed people okay so because i have eventual dreams of settling there those kind of things you can say pro bono work can potentially be connected to your sop to show a strong purpose for why you have a specific interest in pursuing llm but this if you don't plan before afterwards you'll only be left with whatever you've done in your college so do you want to plan your your life in college and even work activities okay after work also if you're going to apply you can plan things right over the next one or two years so do you want to apply uh, uh, do you want to follow plan for it before or do you want to plan for it after right question for for you 
right before you want to plan or after okay so your best chance of acing this is if you plan before consciously rather than trying to find the reasons afterwards if you go to a educational consultant who's charging you 50000 20000 2 lakh rupees okay what are they helping you with that's your last resort that oh now this is the only cv i have now help me find out the gold in what i have done right it may not your life story may not have been led like a gold mine for that llm but there's no option right so sometimes you so you don't want to do it that way absence of real communication in your sop so your sop doesn't communicate idea emotion motivation it doesn't make the interviewer feel anything i am a classic person now i am practicing speaking a lot right i take a lot of sessions so i can communicate emotionally but initially when i started like first 2 3 years 4 years of you know starting uh, i pleaders and all of that i was good at writing only descriptive stuff still i happen to go into that category a lot so how do you descriptive means what analytical descriptive like a classic answer case law logic 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 but no i no no emotion nothing people will feel oh this is a standard boring thing they'll not remember it okay you eat a tasty dish in a restaurant some of those you will really remember but you eat like a uh, you know a standard chili paneer chicken tikka standard everywhere right so you don't want to be like that you want to be memorable and stand out right that is what you have to develop and law school doesn't train us for it so absence of real communication happens okay some people call it drafting skills but it's not drafting skills it is communicating your motivation and emotion okay do you think that you know this is an area where you may be weak at or an area where you haven't practiced anything at all like five years in college i didn't practice this and ramanuj mentioned i failed uh, you know i got shortlisted but couldn't clear through any foreign law firm interviews this was the reason orally also i could not communicate the emotion okay if you think this applies to you you can say yes or me so i know that and you can say no also if doesn't apply to you i will understand that you are with me on this okay so that's the classic example you can write answers to moot memorials all of that but when you have to communicate story emotion and the most difficult part be authentic meaning be true to yourself your motivations and be vulnerable and talk about your shortcomings that is very difficult the admissions board needs to know you as a person and as a professional through a document but they should be able to get a flavor of who is speaking to them okay and if you only brag about your achievements or write shallow stuff now you can brag okay this 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 10 things i did so i should be admitted to your llm program or you write shallow stuff you know like ramanuj said that okay i want to be like nelson mandela everybody can write that right there's nothing distinguishing them so it's obviously rehearsed and prepared okay then your sop will come across as either vague or boring or incoherent okay even if you could have been a good candidate the university admissions board may miss the point so if you don't communicate the right way the message gets lost okay whatever happens if you type a message on whatsapp you press send it gets delivered right but in sop it's not like that you have to communicate the right way then only they will get the point of why they should take you in a lot of people don't know the exact structure of an sop or what the university wants a lot of them don't explain their plans during or after the llm because that is something they want to figure out right but the university is saying the reverse come here prepared okay not deciding their area of specialization i could do x or i could do y how do i know what interests me let me explore maybe i should try z out first if these are thoughts that are going on in your mind now and you are going to be writing an sop this is going to destroy it do you agree or disagree then this is particularly common to those who opt for llm right after llb especially right because you are a fresher you just completed law school you want to try out a bunch of things so how do you exactly choose and they are lost on the specialization and only focus on the university big brand name that's all that matters who cares and then you are trying to mold your sop to that big brand name but not clear about what you want to do this is a problem okay and then of course i have explained this so uh, i will not not go into it so what you will do in the llm program what you will research on okay even what your research will be on you must explain and then why that university so customization is very important you should do some research on the university and identify who are the leading faculty there what kind of academic work is produced there what the university is known for okay who are the leading al alumni of that university so you want to paint the picture of the idea that you know who goes who 
what kind of people emerge from that university what kind of teaching is there what kind of people you want to be associated with okay and this has to be done separately for each universe university okay and after llm what will do this one is a very important one okay people struggle with english grammar and vocabulary expression you know so they they don't use the right language they may make mistakes and grammatical mistakes in a 1200 word sop can kill it for you you cannot have space for typos wrong english grammar any of this it will get thrown out okay so you know which mistakes not to make now uh, do you say yes or no okay or maybe if i am so that i have a sense and then i'll go into the components okay and this part now i'll go faster now because you know what not to do and you know how the inter interviewer should or the admissions board should feel so you know that now it will it you will understand this very fast okay introductory paragraphs they must refer to incidents from your childhood okay respect the readers time don't give them your whole childhood story not every life trouble okay don't talk about every school you went to okay but you can use some facts for your advantage okay so uh and you want to identify the di defining moment in your childhood so find one point in time one experience which is really relevant like ramanuj gave example of somebody who said he visited his sister uh was in depression and visited his sister for coffee abroad now i'll give you my example of what i would write okay if if i had to pursue an llm in business law so i'm choosing my specialization i'll mention an incident i was a child walking with my parents and it was like marine drive i was maybe 6 years old or something and they asked me who do i want to become and you know there's a word that just came out the word industrialist came out of my mouth i said i want to be an industrialist and i really didn't know what i what it meant okay i would have had a very limited english vocabulary so i probably heard the term and picked it from somewhere but i knew that it means someone famous successful and rich i seem to have a lot of ambition even as a young kid so now i'm going to build a story on how uh, how passionate i am about business and why i got to law and how business and law interact intersect for me this is not sufficient for my interest in business but the starting point i must find more life choices that can explain that okay so i opted for commerce as an additional subject right from class 8 so that i could understand business and accounts okay i want to explain my choices further now okay how did it all align to the same point business or business laws this is important so i will need to keep some room to say later that how i am interested in academic pursuits and teaching also okay so now i'll give you more examples and academic purpose or contribution to society very welcome in any llm application okay so applic applicants are usually struggling with this so you you must explain your choices and you must explain what they mean otherwise interviewers will misinterpret okay imagine this i am throwing stones in the water every time i go for a picnic with my parents we go every every alternate weekend to 20 kilometers away now why exactly do i throw those stones do i do it because i am bored or do i do it because you know there is some animal underneath the water and i i love fantasy and adventure and i want to provoke that animal to emerge and i want to see a big animal emerge okay or am i you know or am i just amazed by the beauty of how those ripples fall in water so you want to put that interpretation and the why okay this is the example to tell you why you did each thing so i am to told you i chose business and accounts okay now i am going to say now if you don't tell your reasons you know why you chose both business and accounts if you don't say that interviewer will not be able to understand your motivations so this is the formula situation take a screenshot situation in your life plus the action or your or the the choice you made and the motivation so every llm sop paragraph is literally going to have these three things okay situation plus action or choice plus motivation please take a screenshot one of the activities i participated in in class 11 was an international convention where teams from local and international colleges made detailed presentations on bilateral trade between india and another asian country okay and our team even traveled to malaysia and surveyed 20 indian companies indian it companies based in kuala lumpur okay and i love the idea of how this international business was done okay so this is freezing the interest in business now i must explain why i chose law i cannot say that you know everybody was doing engineering management and i am different so i chose law 
I chose law because I was interested in the commercial and practical dealings of people. Why? Because I had an issue with trusting people in commercial dealings. I was really interested in business, but how would I know that I am not being taken for a ride? So I know that if I know the law, I can enforce my rights. I can have contracts. I know all of that. Okay. Now I am closing the loop. Business and law are getting connected. I will need to be smart enough to protect myself. If I know the law, I can do it. Then I should explain as a lawyer, as a law student, how did I nurture my interest? So I can say I participated in a corporate law moot where we won and we were working on a very challenging. I was a speaker and we were working on a very exciting business problem to argue, and our team won that. But that wasn't enough. I want to help other people succeed. So I coached our team next year so that they could benefit from my experiences, and they came runners-up in the competition. And I felt that we were not learning enough in our college also. So I decided to learn business, to read business books around investment banking and finance from America, write about the financial crisis. Okay, and I wrote blog posts on each of these, and I also taught my juniors. corporate laws based on what my learnings were when i was in fifth year i was teaching juniors in third year and fourth year i took some classes maybe i took i took like four five classes okay like this now if you hear does this sound more convincing to you yes no maybe do these choices add up to demonstrate that i am following through with what i have been interested in as a child now after you read this sop you will think that wow this person has been so sorted in life and always thinking of one thing right but the reality is that like everyone i have also made bad choices wrong choices incoherent choices been messed up okay but the important thing is some of the choices you make have to add up and they have to be conscious conscious choices you have to make that add up okay so you continue to strengthen all of this so this why did i say only my past experiences because i'm imagining what i would write if i was a fresher if i was starting applying now i can obviously say many more things that you know uh uh that you know how i built a business worked in tri tri legal all of that but now my question is that even without all of that as a fresher what do you think does my statement seem powerful enough for admissions do you feel that everything about my life was about business law would a top university want such a student for their business law llm could this person make their name proud going uh name proud going forward yeah so i can keep saying more things i didn't because we have to finish up right so i can say i worked in tri legal for for a year to understand how a tier 1 law firm works in india and then i wanted to go global i was recruited in the interview because apart from being a batch topper i explained the financial crisis to the partner really well and i also said that the firm is very transparent about who they make a partner and that's what inspired my recruiter to recruit me so i have a very very high sense of ownership and responsibility any university wants such a person okay i then decided to start a legal education business myself and so on so i can continue going that going there right so you need to identify these moments that confirm your choices it takes a lot of personal reflection and practice and needs the guidance of a coach somebody said i can add emotion had no emotion true possible i can add more emotion to make it more moving for people right but it's fine to show from your personal experience what you had and then move forward and build up okay some people have extremely emotional stories i don't have one but that will work as long as it's consistent okay now what do you need to do to to write that kind of sop you need to operate at a certain level of you know alertness and performance in your life like you need to be focused on what your goals are do things one after one make progress otherwise you will never be in touch with the your real self you will find you know a big distance between who you are today and what your ambitions are and then you can't look and introspect you won't find answers how many of you face this okay so if you are not passionate about your goals and you are not challenging yourself to push harder you may not be able to find that part of you which is why it's important to continuously keep pushing yourself to grow don't kill yourself but push yourself to grow explain why you want to pursue the llm at that university i have explained this point explain what you will work on during your llm and what you will research on at least broadly so i could say that i have worked on international contracts international technology transactions international arbitrations and tax issues as a remote freelancer if you guys do it okay and as a remote freelancer under at least five different jurisdictions 
and i was amazed to find a huge degree of similarity amongst these legal systems and i am very curious to know about why certain differences that are there exist so i want to work on a comparative analysis of the legal environment for international business in 10 global economies now this is telling them what i will do at the llm right this is the body the ending of the body i am going to say what i am going to do at my llm following here which is point 4 this is point 4 what will i do in the llm okay after that what will i do after i complete my llm what i will do i will look for jobs abroad is a terrible idea because it is vague and unclear right and shows desperation shows neediness nobody wants to take a needy desperate purpose a uh, person okay and don't say that you will expect the university to help you out with international job opportunities they would prefer that you are you have independent plans so you have to explain what kind of work you will look for and many students who succeed you will be surprised okay they say that they will come back and explore working with think tanks public policy roles or explore teaching okay but if you want to work abroad you have to craft it accordingly okay so that it doesn't create that feeling of dependency if i really wanted to work abroad i would say something like this take a screenshot take a screenshot of this i have already been working remotely for foreign clients from so many countries for the past 2 years as a paralegal assisting them on domestic and international legal work i plan to appear for the bar exam for california this year and couple of them have been insisting that i visit them and explore working with them okay and my clients would be delighted to know that i can assist them in a much greater capacity after having qualified the foreign bar exam and completing my llm from this university because i will have a deeper understanding of comparative business laws of multiple jurisdictions okay till here could you follow this could you follow this i am telling this is the last point what to do after the llm okay and you are telling them this that this is what i will do i will tell my clients that i have got this and i will explore further work with them so it's not saying i am dependent i look for jobs and all i'm saying already have all those clients i've done that work they have been insisting that i come there so i'm thinking why not get do enhanced research on this and go and add value to them right so i want you to get the flavor there are lots of giveaways we are giving you can do that you can use that giveaway okay so length of your sop will be between 1200 to 800 words okay it was slightly long but did you get an idea of about writing an sop i don't expect you to have photographic memory so you will not remember everything but do you get sense of this yeah this was the first time we spoke about this okay and you might be thinking wow this guy did so many amazing things okay uh, but it's not the guy who did amazing things it is the planning plus the action that's the only thing you have to think of right and anybody can do this right so we don't expect you to have grasp all of it at once it will take practice it will take work to consciously plan it so that your sop emerges but i want you to start early and which is getting warmed up right now if you've got an idea you've got an idea now maybe you're not a master of it but you've got an idea i explained the simple sop i explained to you how i would write one right that is what you need to know okay young lawyers have to struggle a lot because of lack of guidance on these issues i could have said okay don't lie be honest write why you want to go there that's very vague right so i gave you examples of each segment and what to write